morning. Welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome members and visitors, virtual and in person. For those of you who may not know, I am Pastor Claire Acleau, pastor here at Faith Lutheran. If you're joining us virtually, please take a moment to tell us who you are and where you're from by typing it in the chat. Are we live? We're live? Okay, good. Um, here at Faith, we welcome all people, no matter their race, culture, economic status, age, ability, sexual orientation, gender, identity, or expression, and no matter where you are in your spiritual journey. All are invited to participate fully in the life of faith because we are all one in Christ Jesus. I'm so glad you all are here today. Thank you for joining us for worship. Uh, for those of you online, you can find the worship program at flcjeff.org under the worship tab. Um, and we will be doing communion today, so go ahead and grab your communion elements for those of you online if you haven't already. Uh, Carrie, who's joining us virtually today? Do we have anyone? We have Charles, Michael, and Jules. Nice. All right. Welcome, Charles, Michael, and Jules. It's great to have you in worship today. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. You may rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess we that, that we are captive, captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. 
We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Make sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power. Create in us new hearts. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And kiddos, you want to come and sit in one of the front pews? All right, good morning. So today I want to talk to you about nard. Do you know what nard is? No? No idea? Yeah, a lot of people don't. It's fine. So nard is an ointment. It's kind of a goop, right? And it has lots of fragrance or perfume or smell to it. Um, it was something used in the Bible to prepare a person for something special. People would put it on a person's head to prepare them for being king. Or people would put it on a person's body after they died to prepare the person for their funeral. I have something similar to nard right here. This is blessing balm. It's also goop and it also is fragranced. It comes in a little container and it's meant to be put on a person to bless them. I'm going to how, show you how I sometimes use it. So I'm going to put a cross of this blessing balm on your forehead, okay? Ready? It's just like, kind of like chapstick it feels like. Can you smell it? Uh. Can you smell it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, in our gospel story for today, a woman named Mary put a whole bunch of this really expensive, fragrant nard on Jesus' feet, and then she wiped it off with her own hair. Mary did this as an extravagant act of love for Jesus because she was very close friends with him and she loved him so much. The story says that the smell of the nard filled the entire house. So smelling that fragrance would remind everyone in the house of that special moment when Mary wiped Jesus' feet. And the smell would stay in her hair for days and it would stay on Jesus' feet for days. So every time they smelled it for the next week or so, it would remind them of that special moment when Mary showed incredible love for Jesus. So today I also want to put some of this on the back of your hands because I want you to be able to smell it now and to smell it later. All right, so put your hand out. And give it a little sniff because it's hard to smell when it's on your forehead, right? Yeah. So give it a sniff. What's it smell like? What's it smell like? Unknown, right? All right. So I want you to remember this smell, okay? Sniff your hand as often as you want to today and remember what it smells like. And whenever you smell this fragrance or whenever you smell other things like this fragrance somewhere else, I want you to think about how much God loves you. And I want you to remember that you are special, okay? When you smell this, I want you to remember that God will always love you, no matter what. All right? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. And thank you for giving us ways to remember that you love us. Ways like blessing balm that we can smell or candles that we can light uh, to remind us of your love for us. Um, please continue to be with us and let us see you work in our lives. And let us remember about your love as often as we smell this wonderful fragrance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The 
first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 to 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me. The jackals and ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I'm formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsively Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fullness of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then and our, our mouth was filled, filled with laughter, laughter and, and our, our tongue, tongue with shouts of joy. And then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading for today is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 14. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right, as you are able. We are turning, Lord, to hear you. You are merciful and kind, slow to anger, rich in blessing, and with love to us inclined. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why is this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, dear, beloved children of God, from God, our Creator, through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever done something extravagantly foolish for the sake of love? My grandma and grandpa met in 1939 at a local dance at the courthouse back in my hometown of Racine, Wisconsin. Grandpa was 18 and grandma was 17, and my dad actually has a photograph of that event back home. Grandma lived on the potato farm that her family owned after sailing over from Czechoslovakia, and grandpa was a military man. Fast forward some time to December 1941, and Grandpa was home in Racine on leave for Christmas. As you may remember, December 7th, Pearl Harbor was attacked. Grandpa's unit got called back to their bases, and he was sent to to New Jersey. Well, Grandma and Grandpa decided to get married right away. And shortly after Grandpa went to New Jersey, Grandma hopped a train to join him. All by herself just 19 years old, leaving her parents and traveling by train more than 860 miles away from home just to get married. They did get married with fellow military friends of my grandpa as their best man and as their maid of honor. When they finally got settled, they spent about a week sleeping on the ground under military blankets because they had nothing and their houses or their housing wasn't ready for them yet. The only reason they even had blankets was because Grandma had gone to the Red Cross for help and they had given her $16 for the supplies they needed to get their feet on the ground. I remember listening to my grandma tell stories about how she wore her high heel shoes down to flats from all the walking she did during that time because they didn't have a car, she had no other shoes, and she didn't have extra money to spend. That is a story that involves quite a bit of extravagant foolishness for the sake of love, wouldn't you say? Another story for you. Once I met this girl online, and we really liked each other. But we found out we lived six hours away from each other. Well, we decided to go against all rational thinking, and we pursued a relationship from six hours apart. We spent a lot of time on Google Hangouts, which is kind of a video chat where you can see and hear each other with the laptop's video cameras. Well, after a month of video chats, she decided it was worth worth it to risk driving the six hours to meet in real life. My dog, Padfoot, approved of her when we met, so I decided it would be all right if we continue dating long distance. We made several long trips to see each other over the next few months, but then it came time for my internship year of seminary, where I would be sent to God only knows where to live and work as an assistant pastor for 11 months. Long story short, that girl gave up her life and her job in Indianapolis to move more than 2,400 miles away to Coos Bay, Oregon to be with me for internship. And that huge risk of extravagant foolishness that she took was the best thing we have probably ever done for our relationship. And we ended up getting married. Okay, so cute stories aside, what does this have to do with our text for today? Well, it is Mary's act of extravagant foolishness for the sake of love that we encounter in today's Gospel reading. Mary anoints Jesus' feet. This is an incredibly intimate act between her and Jesus, and it reflects the intimate relationship that Mary and Martha and Lazarus and Jesus shared. Mary takes an extraordinary amount of nard worth a year's wages and anoints Jesus' feet. Then, in another sign of intimacy, she wipes Jesus' feet with her own hair. In this act of extravagant and foolish love, Mary models the relationship that Jesus is teaching us to have with others and with each other. And, think ahead. This 
is exactly what Jesus himself will soon demonstrate when he washes, when he washes the disciples' feet. He washes their feet and tells them to go out and do the same. He models this relationship of extravagant grace and love for others. But today we see Mary model it for Jesus first. Think about the absurdity of the amount and the cost of the nard, the incredible extravagance of it. Judas Iscariot thinks this act is a waste, and it is a waste. It's just like in last week's sermon about the prodigal son, the big, unnecessary grace of the father's welcome, the excessive and extravagant use of grace. It's wasteful. He squanders it on this man who has done all the wrong things. But that's what God's love is. And that is what Mary is demonstrating. But Judas Iscariot is upset regardless. Putting whatever his intentions are aside for now, he suggests that the perfume should have been sold and that the money should have been given to the poor. Mary shows an incredible act of love, and all Judas can say is, but what about the poor? Judas misses the point. This is what happens with a lot of us a lot of the time. It's called deflection. For example, I remember buying a t-shirt one time that supported a program that helped orphans overseas. And one of my cousins complained to me that we had plenty of orphans here in North America that I should be helping instead. She deflected by saying, what about these others, these orphans here in America? Or you give to support an organization that helps refugees, and people are upset because we have so many homeless people here, um, on, here of our own that need help. They're deflecting from an organization that is helping people by drawing their attention away from the refugees and to the homeless in our own country. You say, black lives matter, and someone argues, all lives matter. You show any kind of support to any marginalized community, any group of people that are different than the majority or the mainstream, and the rest of that majority says, but what about us? We saw this happen when we put up the progressive fl pride flag outside of our church. One gentleman said he feels less welcome here now because he doesn't see himself represented in that flag. But he's missing the point. We so often miss the point. The point is to show love where it is needed. The point to the gentleman complaining about the progressive fly pride flag is that this has been a place where he, a cisgendered, heterosexual, white male, has been welcomed for over 75 years. And now we are trying to make it even more welcoming to even more kinds of people. This doesn't mean that he's less welcome. It just means other people are also welcome. The point of the Black Lives Matter movement is not that all lives don't matter, it's that the black community especially needs our support right now. So that's where we will show our love and support. We're not taking support away from white people. We are creating extra support where it is needed. If a house is on fire, Lyle comes and he hoses down the burning house, right? Not the entire block of houses. The other people on the block don't ask, but what about us? Why aren't you paying attention to us right now, Lyle? No. They all do what they can to help the house that is in need, right? The truth of the matter is that deflection usually happens by people who have no honest interest in having actual dialogue about an issue. They aren't willing to help a cause, so they draw attention away from it. This is what Judas does. Mary models relationship, but Judas rejects that relationship. Mary shows extravagant, excessive grace, and Judas deflects that grace. Mary acts in love. She gets it. She understands Jesus' love. She understands God's love for us. She acts with extravagant foolishness for the sake of love. But how do we know that this love actually reflects our God? How do we know that God's love and grace are extravagant and excessive? We look at the past. Take a look at our Isaiah reading for today. It says right there, 
God says, remember all that awesome stuff I did for you? Remember when I parted the sea and I brought you out of the desert and I defeated your enemies and everything else? That's who I am. You've seen it time and time again. I'm consistent and trustworthy in my love for you, God says. You know it because you've seen it over and over again. But you know what? Forget that, God says. Don't focus on it. Instead, here's something completely new. You see, God did something completely new in Jesus Christ. Now, in order to fulfill the law, instead of having to follow all the Levitical laws, now what we have to do is to love. The past is still important. It's a part of who we are. It's still something we can look back to and learn from. But it's not where we should have our focus. Our focus should be on these new things in Christ. We need to move forward and we need to explore new possibilities and ask ourselves, where is God leading us? We need to be willing to learn from the past, realize that we can't go back, and move forward into this whole new thing. Yes, God is leading us to the cross on Easter Sunday, but what about today? Where is God leading us now, in this moment? What is God doing to call us forward today? Coming out of a pandemic is the perfect time for this. This is the perfect moment to look at our past, to look at what our church has been in the past, to look at what our congregation has been in the past, and to reassess and to move forward in a whole new way. God is doing a new thing in this church, even in this moment right now. God is around and within us, and we can't control it. I know that's very scary, but that's the way we have to let it be. All we can do is listen to where God is leading us, and then fall into and live into it. We have to show our love for Jesus in extravagantly foolish ways. I know that begs the question, how do we do that when Jesus is no longer physically among us? Listen to, to Jesus' words for today. He said, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. So you want to show your love for Jesus? Then show your love to the poor. How did Mary do this? By having intimate relationships with others. That's how we do it. We act in love to build and strengthen and reconcile our relationships in love. Now, I talk a lot about reconcil reconciliation in relationships because the Bible talks a lot about reconciliation in relationships, but I want you to hear me right now for a second. I want to be absolutely clear. Reconciliation does not mean we have to be friends with everyone. This doesn't mean we have to continue to let toxic or harmful people into our lives. Sometimes, in order to have the healthiest relationship with our own selves, which is equally as important as our relationship with others, we need to establish boundaries with a person. Or sometimes even cut ties with someone who is harming us. When I talk about reconciling relationships, I'm talking about the kind of relationship that God intended us to have. Healthy relationships that build one another up. Loving relationships that support each other. Loving relationships that respect each other's boundaries because they want the best for each other. This is acting in love. So with that in mind, knowing that there is new life in Christ Jesus in our midst, it's time for us to find ways to do something extravagantly foolish for the sake of God's love for us. It's time for us to find ways to show ridiculous, ridiculously absurd amounts of grace to people. It's time for us to stop waiting for the perfect moment to help someone and instead start where we are, use what we have, and do what we can with extravagantly foolish grace. Amen.
us join together in the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For those of you online, if you have prayer requests, go ahead and type them into the chat now. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God, do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick, especially Aaron, Natalie, and Chris, Charlotte, Larry, Dan, Ezra and Lucia, Greta, Roger, Sonia, Phil, Karen, Dorothy and Gordon, Patty, Fred, Lisa, Aaron, Norma, Pam, Sandy, Shirley, Danielle, Teresa, Mike, Betty, and Alice. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Carrie, do we have any other prayer requests? Okay. For anything, Lord, that you see in our minds or in our hearts that we speak aloud or silently now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another from where we are sitting. Speaking of new things, we're going to start passing the plates. So, um, I think this is the part where they come up and get the plates from me and you play music, right?
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal, the Paschal Feast, that, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. All are invited at this table, so don't anyone hold back. Go ahead and have a seat, and the ushers will direct you.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, let's see what we've got. Um, so on Holy Week, um, we're having uh, Monday, Thursday service at 7, 7, and then on Friday we're having a prayer vigil from 9 to noon or 8 to noon, I can't remember, 8 to noon, you guys are so good, um, and there's a sign up for that in the narthex, so if you want to come and pray for 15 minutes, for an hour, whatever, go ahead and sign your name, um, and then regular Easter service at 1030. Um, but that's Holy Week. We still have some time. Um, I want to thank Scott and Veronica and Barb for all your hard work this week. They did a lot of cleaning um, and going through stuff. There is a table of stuff in the hallway um, outside of the fellowship hall. So if you go, you know, through the fellowship hall and then back out, like, you know, farther. There's a, huh? Yeah, by the kitchen, if you know where the kitchen is. Um, go through the stuff. If you want it, take it. Um, yeah, take it home. What else? Anyone interested in singing for choir for Easter? Oh, wait, that was last week. Are you meeting today too? Okay, we're going to meet. They are going to meet today by the piano after service, and they will rehearse their anthem. Um, we're still looking for nursery volunteers starting in April, which is now. So, <laughs> so you can sign up for that on the white uh, sign-up page where we, we sign up for um, greeting or um, assisting minister and whatnot. You can sign up for that there. Um, we're looking for a musician for um, the first Sunday we'll need them for is the fifth Sunday in May um, to do a contemporary worship service. Someone who um, can play music, um, can maybe sing, can lead a congregation in song. These things are not things that your pastor can do, so um, we're looking for one of those. So if you know anybody, or you know someone who might know someone, say something, please. Yeah. Um, let's see. Seth is looking for someone to train in the library. So if you're interested in putting a little time into the church, um, doing some volunteer work or whatever, if you like books or numbers or organizing or whatever, um, you can contact me or Seth. Um, do, do, do. Easter lilies will adorn our altar on Easter Sunday. There will be a 15... They are $15 each. The deadline to submit the form, which I think is in this week's bulletin, is Sunday, April 10th. Um, and um, the Ots have an announcement, right? Oh, okay. All right. So the Ots do not have an announcement. Um, <laughs> does anybody else have anything? Okay. Whoever, you guys can, like, arm wrestle over who first. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's yours. Okay. Just real quick, one final reminder, this coming Saturday, April 9th, we'll be showing the 1973 movie, Jesus Christ Superstar, at 2.30. If you want to bring a snack to share, just to be on the air of caution, I would say let's keep it to store-bought snacks. I know people are good cooks and can make good homemade stuff, but we still want to be cautious about such things. So again, that'll be at 2.30 this coming Saturday. Uh, and again, for all those youngsters and even non youngsters that haven't seen it, we invite you to come and watch. Thank you. Carol? A little bit of an early warning. There are a few things that have changed. Thank you, Mr. COVID. There will be no Easter baskets for seniors this year because we would have to make the candy and touch it, and therefore that has eliminated that one. There will be uh, there still will be an Easter egg hunt and early warning to teenagers. 
we will be not doing Busy Saturday this year. We have moved it to next Sunday after church. Palm and Sunday, right? Palm Sunday, yeah. right. That's next Sunday. And we will meet, stay after church and get some of the things done. We will make the eggs for, for, that we glue onto envelopes for Center for Lay Ministry. And we will be doing uh, filling the plastic eggs for the egg hunt that will happen. And we have been asked this next year, this year, that we move the egg hunt from the front street because we don't have 25 youth anymore to guard that road to the backyard. So whenever you, if you bring grandkids or whoever, we will be doing the egg hunt, but we will be doing it in the backyard. And then, so next Sunday, plan on staying for a while. We'll have to fill the eggs for the egg hunt, and we'll have to be doing some other things to get ready for Easter. Thank you. Go ahead, Carrie. Oh, Charles, this isn't on. <laughs> is Carrie on? It is okay, now. <laughs> Charles, uh, announcement from Charles. Uh, congratulations to Michael being promoted to Professor Abernathy at IUS in his upcoming retirement after 25 years next month. And Charles also looks forward to seeing everyone on Easter Sunday in person. Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> and, oh, did you have something? Service page and all the acolyte. It's an acolyte, yeah. So on the service page, it looks like people want to sign up for things. Okay. So on the website, on our website, which is flcjeff.org, um, there is a service page and all the, um, if you want to uh, sign up for things like assisting minister, um, acolyting, um, other things, um, there's descriptions, like job descriptions there. Um, so uh, if you're interested in doing those, you can go and check it out and sign up in the, in the narthex. Right? Yes. Anything else? Yep. What else? Yep. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Small candies. Small candies that will fit in. Small candies that will fit in plastic eggs, and please, they have to be wrapped, sealed, sealed. Yeah. So like no Hershey kisses. Hershey kisses don't count, right? Exactly. No. Right. Okay. But they, the hard candy of things like that. Yeah. Thank you a million. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the kids will want empty Easter eggs. Although, children's sermon opportunity, the tomb was empty, right? So, okay. Um, we need to make about 100 eggs. 100 so, eggs is our goal. So, don't bring us 25 bags with 50 in each bag, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? That's everything? We're good. Okay. All right. Oh, I forgot this one. So... If you, nope, we already did offering. Um, everyone online, I want to thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's service or you found it meaningful, we would love it if you could prayerfully consider giving so we can keep Faith's Ministries going strong. You can give at the website, flcjeff.org, under the Give tab. Um, you do not have to sign up for an account to do that. Remember, everyone, in this world that is becoming more and more reliant on technology, that to share online, to share and to forward and to, you know, um, interact online uh, with the faith accounts is to bear witness, right? And Facebook is our new Yellow Pages. So you can like us on Facebook at Faith Lutheran Church ELCA. Uh, so find us and click the follow button. Everyone online, if you enjoyed today's service, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. We are also on YouTube at Faith Lutheran Church Jeffersonville, Indi Jeffersonville IN, so be sure to subscribe there too. And lastly, you can find us and follow us on Instagram at Faith Lutheran Jeff, all one word. And with that, let us rise as we are able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Thank you.